Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is November 15th, 2020. Howard, that's a nice chair. How much money did you spend for it? Tens of millions of pesos. What's up? It's a late, we're doing a lag, getting a lot of calls. Where's Momentum Monday? I go, you know, we're in, yeah, uh, getting messages too, yeah. People be selfish people. Coming. <laughs> coming, biatches. Okay, I right. just need to push yeah. ups. Push-ups, dude. I couldn't do 10. Now I can do 20. What do you think? If you can do 20 real push-ups, I would be impressed. And my boobies actually touch the floor. Yeah. So they're actually almost military. So. <laughs> What's that? Well, mine sags, so it's a, I get an extra foot of play. Yeah. All right. It used to be I made fun of you. Now you make fun of me. That's yeah, the that's shoot. True. The shoes have turned, or as they say in Bulgaria, pass the potato. Uh -huh. Ha ha. All right, Gary Shanling, welcome to uh, Momentum Monday. Exactly. All right, let's talk about the market a little bit. Why? It's terrible. Things are terrible. Couldn't be worse. This is a, it's a bear market. The economy shut down. The president's in a bunker. The new president's 105. There's no way, this, let's pull up the charts. There's no way the market's doing well. Oh, look, the wall yeah. of worries, the greatest wall of worries since the Great Wall of China was built, basically. Yes. I mean, they, basically half of Europe is in lockdown. In yeah. US. Listen, the easiest way to get Europe out of a bear market is lock them up. Lock them up became the slogan for how they unleashed the market gods. Just lock everybody up and the market goes up. It's fascinating. And yet, if you go around the world, uh, stock market indices are just making new highs. It's not just the US. It's the uh, Netherlands. It's China. It's Japan. I mean, Japan. almost everywhere you look at. Um, Turkey. Istanbul. Wow. That, they have currency issues, so yeah, that, that's understandable. It's a, it's a fake market, but still, every uh, market's fake. Last Monday, Pfizer and uh, BioNTech uh, came out and said that their vaccine, COVID vaccine is 90% effective, mm -hmm. and the market just went crazy. Russell 2000 gapped up 7%, something that you typically see. 7%? Uh, yes, it was a 7% gap in, the, in uh, Monday morning. Something that you typically see like in the depths of a big, super big bear market, but this time it was a 7% gap to new all-time highs. Good point. So That's what we're looking at there, Russell. We go back to a monthly. I mean, this is the index we all complained about. I mean, that is, I, again, I'm fascinated because I can't explain it, and that's what makes the markets fascinating. Small business is shut down. It's fascinating. Well, the market is a discounting mechanism so supposedly now that we have at least one working vaccine and uh, we are anticipating several other companies to report similar results so at least it's on the horizon that probably by by the end of next year most of the world will have easy access to a vaccine where yeah. it, when the vaccine comes where would you take it if they said you have to take it in the forehead would you take it why do we need to take it in the forehead? And I'm, I'm if sure. they said. <laughs> I, I forehead or ass? You have two choices, your forehead or your ass. If that's, my, if that's my only option, I'll take it, whatever it needs to be taken. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, you've heard it here first. Ivan would take it in the ass. Okay, it's fine. You know what? We're starting to look alike. It's kind of creeping me out. Huh. I don't know. Right. So anyways, you're right. America's starting to finally see what we said months ago, betting against corporate America when, when, when death and money is on the line, bad idea. So here comes Pfizer. They did it all themselves. Didn't even move the stock. The companies, well, they're a $200 billion company. Now, what did this Bantex do? I mean, it's Bantex. They actually developed the vaccine. Pfizer is just the distributor. They're doing the distribution from what I understand. Um, so that stock, wow. It's just, what a great time to be an investor. What a fabulous time. Now, if you own Pfizer at 200 billion, you gotta have your head examined when there's so much opportunity. Look at that. Pfizer, 20 years it, of nothing. It, it comes up with a vaccine for COVID and it's still in a base. Dude, fucking markets are 
just aren't the markets amazing when you see that? It's like, like you fucking could save the world if a stock doesn't do anything. And then uh, Uber, which won't make money forever, yeah. is at an all time high. Exactly. Yeah. Who would have thunk? The markets are amazing. Uber will deliver these vaccines to be given to Ivan's butt and never make money from it. And the stock is at all time highs. Whereas Pfizer has one of many tens of thousands of scientists comes up with this thing without the government help. I'm sure they're taking government help somewhere. Um, yeah, fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. All right, sorry, Ivan, keep going. Small caps. Yeah, we had a significant 7% gap to all time highs. And in the same time, all the stocks that benefited in 2020 from all the COVID restrictions, like uh, uh, Zoom and, and Peloton and QDEL, many of those stocks had 15 to 30% drop last week. Yeah. And, and people are saying, oh, we're going to go into lockdown too. That is how you get buried. Not, I'm not bearish on Zoom. I own a little bit, but it's in my 8 to 80. But at the same time, this is how you go broke by saying, oh, we're going to go into lockdown too. Well, the market doesn't think so. I mean, Michigan went lockdown, Europe's lockdown, but just, you know, you can go into lockdown and they, and they could come out with 10 vaccines next week. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Yeah, the and, market's looking. So that, that and it's not that Zoom isn't a good company, it's just money flow, right? Yeah. yeah so way last fair. week, I mean, at the end of the week, the Nasdaq 100 finished down about 1%. Well, the Nasdaq was up like six percent for the week. Uh, huh. The Nasdaq, I mean, Nasdaq is what up more than thirty percent for the year, while the rest of it's still down, I think, or something flat. Flat. Um, so that was the big change last week that we saw that big rotation from the new economy stocks into the old economy stocks, and uh, we don't know how how long is it going to last. But given the the almost 100% certainty that there will be other vaccine announcements in the next six to eight weeks. I think this week you'll see some. It, we might see, you know, more gaps and yeah. it might be really, it's not going to be as easy. The QQQ might not be as easy hold as it was, you know, earlier in the year. We yeah. uh, you know, no. but it's still where all the action is and it's still, where the growth is and in a zero interest rate world. Listen, people will own stocks. I, I, pull, I send you a chart of fixed income, fascinating, you know, because this is still a massive driver for stocks. I don't know if you can pull it up, Ivan. Uh, you oh, the, you. what you sent me, that email? Yeah, that email, there's a couple of great charts if we could pull them up, just yeah. the outflows out of fixed income. Right, so we have the Boost. Thank you. Boost bear spread. So. You share your uh, share your Gmail password with everybody too while we're in there. I don't think even even I know it. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, a, I mean, we're starting to sound alike and do things alike. It's really bothering me. All right, so hang on. Um, so look at that growing demand for fixed income ETFs. Look at the net. Uh, here, we'll scroll down a little bit. Okay, so the assets, look how, uh, oh, so now there's, there's in, wait a minute, increased outflows out of fixed income. Yeah. Uh, so it was like really, fixed income is just completely, everybody wants equities. And that's a little bit scary, but at the same time, there's 0% interest rate, right? So, I, I mean, yes. it's a huge driver, and I think that's just money finally piling into small caps. I'm not going to chase this rotation. Okay, sorry, you can go back to the market, Smith. But you can chase this rotation into Pfizer and yada, 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 but I'm going to really look for my favorite names in a, in a sell-off. Um, I think Google looks the strongest in tech of the big things. Yeah, out of the big five. I think the, I think the DOJ J is toothless. Right, Google has a few surprises based on that chart up its sleeve, either in earnings or in some acquisitions. That you don't see a base like that. I haven't looked at that thing. Yeah, I mean, it's all, all bad it's news. Like, you know, too yeah. much on search. No one talks about Google. It's Facebook, 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 Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. 
Amazon, 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 Netflix. Look at Amazon. You know, it's in a pullback, like all the e-commerce stocks. You know, but I'd look at Google and I'm like, there's something cooking. Like for like some kind of like two thousand dollar move, move to two thousand, I think. So there is stuff out there, you know. Um, and where else in big tech looks interesting, well, Ivan? Just catching up. I mean, Apple yeah. is falling well. I think it's setting up for a breakout. New M1 chip. Like I don't think what people understand is how they've really moved to Taiwan. And as much as so I was reading as much as I could about semiconductors in Taiwan because of the China stuff, China's way behind in semiconductors. The one thing that we've sort of gotten right, the administration, is to be tough on, semi, you know, understand our lead here. The U.S. has a massive lead in, in, in semiconductors. We have, a, and we'll pull up semiconductors in a minute, we have a massive lead with Apple. We moved, Apple moved a lot of stuff to Taiwan, right? And China can't just go into Taiwan and, and do this because it's so much in the engineers' heads, right? You can't just take over the fab uh, and kill all the engineers. Well, I guess you could kill all the engineers and set everybody back like COVID, but just going in there and taking over Taiwan is not gonna solve this for uh, China. America has a huge lead here. Um, a lot of this technology is out of Netherlands and ASML and Taiwan Semiconductor. So Apple could surprise people. The M1 chip, they got the new phones. ASML is a great, you know, semiconductor. Again, I don't do semiconductors, but that, that one is, no one ever talks about it. It's just look at that quiet leader. Um, and, and look at the SMH. Even though it holds Intel, which is like, I don't know, what percentage of that index? Right, and go pull up Intel compared to that. So this thing's rising, even though in, Intel's probably like 20% of the index. So the underlying strength, if you take out Intel, think about that, how strong semiconductors are. And, and no one talks about them, right? And a lot of this is because of AI. I shared a link on my blog today. A lot of this is because this AI revolution that's gonna be yeah, built into that was, is the way to play that in, in yeah. semiconductors, yeah. Yeah, so, so, SMH is probably a laggard compared to NVIDIA and ASML and Taiwan Semi. But again, I don't do semis because it's just so complicated. Like Andy Kessler is like the best analyst I know and worked with semiconductor companies. Even he says he doesn't understand what the hell's going on inside these things. Gavin Baker is another great read um, who was a Fidelity research, ran a big Fidelity fund and is just so bullish on semiconductors. And I just follow him on Twitter and he sends lots of links on this stuff. But Intel just... Look at Intel, man, just missed the boat. They're years behind of everybody. Okay, so that's my rant on semiconductors, go. Okay. I mean, as we already mentioned, uh, stocks are rising around the world. Tech is under a little bit of pressure. I think over the past year, we saw so many times when the small caps would rally, the tech would just consolidate or pull back a little bit, and then they would reverse roles. So there's been a constant rotation between those two, old economy, uh, new economy, but overall stocks are rising. The US dollar is kind of weak, uh, trying to hold this level here. And you don't really care. I mean, you don't care if it gets overall, weaker because it'll help stocks, it'll help stocks. I mean, it tends to help stock. I mean, you care if you're European investing in U.S. stocks, you care. Or if you're an American who wants to go on vacation to Europe, you kind of care. Um, oh, what a time to go to Europe. Free and death. They got their new strain of COVID there. It's like COVID-60. Yeah. The, uh, so what I was going to talk about, Ivan, if you're, if you're done, is, is uh, fashology. And, and let's take a look at biotech, too. Is biotech still working? Yeah, biotech is setting up to be a, to be a leader. There are definitely quite a few interesting setups. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we got biotech. We got small caps. You even got the financials. Okay, now that was like, I make fun of them all the time. But, I mean, look at XLF. You know, short that at your own. I mean, the old economy Gapped up about six seven percent on Monday and, and kind of held it. So. If that does, you know, if that doesn't give up the goose fast, then that's very bullish. Even though it's a small percent of the S and P. Look at uh, Deutsche Bank. They just threw Trump under the bus the last week, and stocks going. I mean, they've been bankrupt since they were 
No, DB. Okay, that doesn't, uh, what is that you're back in? John Deere. <laughs> <laughs> That's tech humor when Ivan laughs at a ticker. That's funny. Look at Deutsche Bank. Oh my God. You know how many people make fun of that every day and it's now going up? They're Trump's bank. That's Bank of Trump and it's going up. So I wouldn't short the financials, but uh, and in a market where you, I mean, I guess if everything's upside down, financials rise and tech falls for a while, maybe, and just scares some people, but I don't know. There's so much money coming in. So anyways, I was going to get finally to uh, Fashology, another big win for the Fashology portfolio, Ivan. Fetch. Fetch, yeah, definitely. Uh... I didn't know any of this, but they got $300 million from Baba. They just won China as this platform. A good reversal on Friday. So if I saw this in the low 40s, I sold some. I was telling people at the pre-market in 50s. But if I saw this back at 40, I'd re-add. Um, the news is phenomenal. Look at the volume. Go pull up a, a, it's breaking out of its IPO. Forget the dip. That was COVID. You just got this flat base uh, and it's just exploding out of it. So, you know, chasing is a little bit dangerous, but I don't know. Maybe it doesn't give you an entry. Now, understand this is another kind of Etsy, but or another kind of Shopify for very, very high end. The problem is, yes, 15 billion. It's not the same for the faint of heart. So I'm glad we got this. But as I was saying, the same the, market is cap Etsy. Etsy. interesting. What's that? The same market cap as Etsy. Fetch and Etsy. Yeah. The same but Etsy's selling $4 items. Uh, Farfetch is selling $200 white t shirts, for Christ's sake. It's like the end of the world oh. is going on there. I'd rather be selling to rich people than crafts. And, you know, so I'm saying it. This is how the world's thinking, right? Etsy's a bigger company, but Farfetch has a way better margins, I imagine, at some level. And, um, you know, the world just figured out that, I don't know, like discounted cash flow doesn't work. So 15 billion versus 15 billion. Like things are just starting to behave that way. It's like the Peloton Lulu trade, the way they catch up to each other. So, and Peloton's doing a great job of, of, of fast following Lulu at their, at their clothing game. Peloton's quickly you know, coming out with fashion items. So again, this is more of a fashion play at this point than a technology play, these companies. So keep an eye on Fashology. You know, they're just, listen, if these go sideways for two years after the gains they've had, it's phenomenal. But as fashion becomes less about material, less about like seasons and, and, and more about materials and more about how you feel, um, that's why Lulu, they're not trading like the Gap used to do and, 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 and being really volatile, right? They're just growth stocks. Uh, and I'm seeing a ton of startups in the fashion technology space. Yeah, even the Gap. Okay. So I'm, I, I'm trying to think what else. Japan, we talked about. Uh, Asia strong. Uh, Europe shut down. I'm trying to think if we missed anything, Ivan. No, I'm good. Even China is is breaking out despite the fact that its its uh, its biggest stock is under heavy pressure. It seems like the Chinese government or whoever is. I like it tough. <laughs> yeah, but now that's just fuel for the upside. You can't stop Alibaba. The ant, the Chinese just want money like everybody else. So the ant deal will get done eventually. So you know, seeing Baba at low two hundred is probably a gift. Uh, in, the, in the zero interest rate market. It's probably going to be a trillion. China wants a trillion dollar company. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like at some level, China wants a trillion dollar company themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think if there's a safe bet in this world, it's a 10 cent and, uh, and Baba get their chance at a trillion. So that's my bet on Alibaba is that they become the first Chinese to a trillion. But 10 cents catching up, huh? Yeah, they're about the same actually. Seven thirty and quarter of Baba. Seven, oh, ten cent is bigger than Baba right now. So I own, I own, I own them both right now. I'm buying Baba dips, just you know, personally. What, take a look at uh, PDD. This thing's crazy. Yeah, this is like <laughs> Pinterest meets. Look at that thing. This company's like you know how this company's five years old. It's 178 billion. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Incredible growth, you know, just like... And the name, I love the name, Pinduo Duo. <laughs> like Chihuahua. Hua. It's like Chihuahuas, but for internet. Third party. Yeah. So it's Shopify meets, I don't know, it's like a little bit of everything. Started out like 
doing agricultural products, Ivan, in China. Mm-hmm. You know, so you've been following, oh, look at that, JD. Wow, wow, wow. Anyway, so you can't, you can stop China tech, but you can't stop China internet because they're serving the Chinese population, right? The problem with China is you got to worry about fraud. So, you know, that's always a risk. Uh, like luck and coffee, LK. Yeah, exactly. And all, I mean, the past few weeks, all the Chinese electric uh, car oh, companies the vehicles. Have, been, yeah, yeah. have been on absolute fire. I mean, they reversed a little on Friday. In, in I.O. Ivan. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But if you just, I mean, the moves in them have been something similar to what we saw in Tesla. Uh, I think I think bigger, thousand percent. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the, and then there's the other one is, but Tesla's doing great considering the gains, just to hold those gains. Yeah, yeah, look at this. Fascinating. I mean, it could spend the next, Four or five years, basically sideways, <laughs> in a big. It won't. Big I mean, function. something's gonna happen. I think the biggest news of the week I forgot to say is Art G, Kathy Wood. They they took over her company, so that could be like the biggest. We could look back at that and go, those idiots paid the top dollar. This is an asset management firm. She's got how many under management? And this woman built the firm, and they kind of went back in and took over her firm this weekend. She has the most. I mean, the best performing ETFs this year, like. Yeah, several sure of enough, they, sure enough to get bought out. That would be the sign of a top for tech short term. Is this wow. weekend? Is so I wouldn't. You know, we could look back in six months and go, "Oh, I can't believe those idiots paid top dollar for an ETF company right at the top." So, anyways, I think there's some reasons that tech could be could could be uh, an underperformer for six months or so, um, but at the same time. That's where the growth still is. So have a great week, everybody. Ivan, thank you. You too, Howard. See you next week. Get this out to the people. Get this out to the people.